For a few months I've been researching on how to make a good magnetic levitator based on Arduino. But till I get good results I've ordered a magnetic levitation kit like this one. This already has a working circuit. This is a so-called analog magnetic levitator, because it has no microcontroller, just operational amplifiers and transistors. I've made some reverse engineer, and I've made the same circuit and also the PCB, and I'm sharing all the files that you need for this below of this video. I will show you all the components and the boards for this kit, and tell you why we need each component. Also I will mount this kit, I will test if it works ok, connect it to the oscilloscope and see how the signals react, and by that I'll try to explain a little bit how this system works. But before we start, make sure that you click the subscribe button, but also the notification bell, otherwise you might miss some of my future videos. Also a big thank you to all of my patrons for supporting my project. So let's get started. Get professional made PCBs from GLC PCB for very low prices. And now the good news is that the price is the same for any color of the solar mask. The finish quality is very good, the precision as well and good delivery time. For just $2 you can get 10 PCBs of 10 by 10 cm of any color now. You have green, red, yellow, white, blue and black options to choose from. So upload your files to GLC PCB and order the PCBs now and take advantage of this offer. What's up my friends, welcome back. I bought this kit from eBay for around $20. So if you want one, you have a link for that below. It has no guide on how to mount it, but at least we have all the components labeled on the PCB, and each plastic bag has write down the components. So mounting this should be very easy, just follow all the labels on the silk layer of the PCB. But before I've done that, I've took my multimeter and after around 2 hours of testing connections and also placed the board against the light to see the tracks, I was able to track all the connections and reverse engineer the schematic. Then I've created this PCB in Easy EDA, so if you want it you will find the schematic and the Gerbers for the board below of this video. So mounting this should be very easy. Just look at the name of the component and then search that component in the plastic bags. Just one thing to have in mind. In some cases it's hard to know how the component is placed, but usually the squared hole is the first pin of that component. So for example for this voltage regulator, the square pad is the output, and for each of these BJT transistors, the square pad is the emitter. And for all the hole sensors, have in mind that this is the output pin. And on the board that I've made, I've marked all these pins as well, so don't worry. So I start by soldering this first board with all the components and I first solder the two LM324 amplifiers. Then I can also solder the other smaller amplifier, the LM393. Now I solder the TL431 voltage reference here on these holes and knowing that this square pad is the first pin. Now I do the same for the 78L05 voltage regulator. Ok so now I solder all the resistors. The value is labeled onto the PCB and each plastic bag will show you the value. So add the resistors, flip the board, solder all the pads and remove the wires. Now that I have the resistors I can now add the capacitors. Make sure about the polarity of the electrolytic capacitors. But we also have two non-polarized capacitors of 100 nanofar. Ok so now I place all the diodes. All diodes are the same, the 1 and 4148, and we have all the cathodes marked on the PCB. Now I add the two 10k potentiometers. And finally I solder that small LED and the male pins on the other side of the PCB that will be used to connect both PCBs together. I also solder the DC connector. All components except the male pins must be soldered on this side of the PCB, the one with the silk layer. Now I finally solder all the transistors. We have two types, the NPN and the PMP transistor, and we have labels for that placed on the PCB as well. Ok so now that all the components are placed for the first PCB, let's see the second PCB. This will be more simple. First we have to place the coils. Place the screw on the bottom side of the PCB. Add the coil with the input cables on the upper side and then we tie the screw. So now I do this for all 4 coils. 
we had to place the coils first in order to know the height of the hall sensors. So now let's add the sensors. For that we first bend like this one sensor, 90 degrees with the sensing part facing up. Then we solder that on sensor 3, like this, at the same height as the coils. This will be the Z-axis sensor. The other two, sensor 1 and sensor 2, will make a 90 degrees angle like this between each other. So now we have all three sensors. I had to look over photos on the internet in order to know how to place this. Ok guys, now we have to solder the coils wires. The wire that is coming out from the middle of the coil will go to one of these holes on the side. Then the wire that's coming out from the side of the coil will go to one of these four holes. We have to make the connection between the coil X1 and the Y1, and between the coil X2 and the Y2. Finally I solder the female pins all around and also the jumper pins here on these holes. Then we have to screen place three magnets on each hole, using the given M4 screws in the plastic bags. So pass that screw with three magnets and add the nut on the other side. So now the second board is ready as well. I add the screws as fit on the bottom PCB and then I place the second PCB on top of this one and now the levitator should be ready, but we might need to calibrate it. So for that I connect 12 volts at the input and power on the module and I place the levitation magnet on top of it. And there is no need for tuning. The levitator works. You will see that only when you place the magnet on top, the LED will turn on. You could even spin the magnet if you want. Or you could place something on top of the magnet and make it levitate. It is quite amazing to see the magnet block floating in the air, and this might be a very nice and geeky thing to have on your desktop. So now let's analyze the signals. I've connected the oscilloscope to the coils of the Y axis. As you can see if I move the magnet in the Y axis, the signal gets more negative or more positive, in order to increase or decrease the magnetic field of the coils and by that we keep the magnet in the middle. But if I move in the X axis, the signal won't change for the Y axis. Ok so now I connect the probes to the output of the amplifiers, and as you can see when one is getting higher, the other one is getting lower, in order to keep the magnet centered. So basically all this does is to read the magnetic field from the hall sensor, we amplify that, we apply the amplified signal to the transistor base and control the magnetic field of the coils just to keep the magnet in the center. So imagine that the magnet will go to the left. The x-axis hall sensor will increase its output and the left coil will increase its magnetic field and the right coil will now decrease its field in such a way that this will push the magnet back in the center. But this is made very fast so the magnet will always stay in the middle. So the hall sensor detects the position and will change its output. We amplify that output with the op amps and apply that to the transistors and this will control the magnetic field of the coils. Pretty basic right? So guys this was the magnetic levitation kit from eBay. Remember that I'm sharing a tutorial below this video and also the schematic and the Gerber files for the PCB if you want to make your own or make any other change or test with this circuit. In a future video I hope that we will also see a tutorial on how to tune some PID values and make a levitator using the Arduino and by that we will learn even more about this kind of closed loop control with magnets and electromagnets. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you have learned something new, if so consider subscribing and please make sure that you activate the notification bell, because till now only 23% of my subscribers are watching my videos. Also consider supporting my work on Patreon. So thanks again and see you later guys.